everybody. I hope you've had a great day logging on to all the sessions for Smile, Midlands Region Thinking Day weekend celebrations. And just because we can't meet together doesn't mean we can't craft together. So for adults and Trefoil Guild members, um, we're going to do some four crafts that are designed with things that you've got at home on purpose. I've tried to do things that uh, you've got all the materials at home because as I say we can't meet together to do it face to face so this is the next best thing so thank you for letting me come into your home and share some crafts with you from three out of the five world centres the first one we're going to do is straw weaving and it's not straw as in hay it's straw using plastic or paper straws. The worksheet shows this from our cabana uh, in Mexico. And Mexico is very famous for bright coloured ponchos uh, that they sell in the markets. And you've got there a picture of our cabana and also the logo. The step-by-step -step instructions on here so that you can do it at your leisure. But I'm just going to go through quickly um, just how to how to go about it. So we've got four straws, four pieces of wool. If you haven't got a needle, a little bit of sellotape on the end of your wool will thread through the straw so that all four straws are threaded up. And it comes to the end, there you go. And I'm just going to lie the straws together. Now, it says on the worksheet about knotting them at the end. But I have found that it's easier to put a piece of cardboard. And I've got some double-sided tape. If you haven't got double-sided tape, stick it with a, a bit of sellotape. That, that will work fine. And I'm just putting it onto a piece of card. Just a square of card. And... You, you, the one that you're going to thread as well, the one that you're going to weave. So I'm going to stick that down like that. And they're all secure then in that piece of card. Can you see? All right. And then all you do is with the piece that you're going to weave, if you hold the straws together near the piece of card, and you're literally going to go under and over like that. Pull your thread through and then weave it back again. So this is acting like a weft thread. The straws are your warp and the one that you're weaving with is your weft thread. OK, can you see just backwards and forwards? in and out the straws like that it's a bit fiddly but i'm sure you'll do it if you have too long a piece of wool it will get all tangled up can you see push it towards the top and keep going all the way to the end of your length of wool And as you work, you can gently, when you've built up a little bit, you can gently pull the straws down so that your weaving will go onto the long threads. I'm trying to hold it and show you at the same time. If I was with you, see, we do this together. Some of you will know that I've been... <laughs> I've been to lots of trefoil guilds and ladies groups and that doing all sorts of craft with you and I'm quite happy to come out when we can, when we can meet or even now we can't meet, I'm happy to do a Zoom with you that we can do some craft together. There you go. All right. And then as you work, if you gently pull up then your weaving can go on to, can you see at the top there? The weaving's gone on to the four threads. And keep going. 
Do as long as you want. There's a little bit that I, I did earlier on. And when you've done as much as you want to, take off the, the straws, knot it at the bottom. And then you can use those for medallions for something. They make excellent mobiles um, because they're lantern shaped for Chinese New Year that you're doing. But you could have two or three at different lengths. Cut off the ends to what you want them and you can hang those in the window. All right. Hope you get on all right. Have a look at the worksheet. And enjoy doing some very colourful Mexican straw weaving. So now we're going to visit Pax Lodge in London, our nearest world centre. And we're going to look at some Victorian paper pricking. Now I've done lots of workshops on this and I've done you a sheet. Again, there's a little bit of a, a, a potted history about Victorian paper pricking there and what you need. And then the step by step instructions. But we're going to do it together. So on the second sheet there, you've got some patterns. You've got two patterns. For paper pricking you need to cut those out and you need a couple of sheets of soft paper now I'm using some paper that I've taken out of an old scrapbook that I've got here um, cartridge paper a soft a soft paper and not too thick and you put your pattern on with the holes showing now if you want to get it really central if you hold it up to the light You'll, you'll get it central, but just put it on. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit off centre because we're going to cut round it, so don't worry. And then secure it with a couple of paper clips. You can put four on if you want to, as it says on the worksheet, just to keep it secure. So you've got the two pieces of soft paper and you've got your pattern on the top. And then you need a soft pad. Now I've got a, a, a paper pricking mat, but you can use a wad of um, foam rubber, you can use a wad of kitchen roll, you can use a wad of toilet paper. You'll get some very pretty toilet paper after when we've finished. <laughs> but whatever you've got to hand, just a soft pad and make sure you've got something to protect your table. If it's a cutting mat or a thick piece of card, you really don't want holes in your best dining room table. So your mat goes on the top and then you need a paper pricking tool or you can use a single needle tool. If you're into parchment craft as I am, you can use um, a single needle tool. If you haven't got that, you can still do it. If you've got a big safety pin or a nappy pin, you can use that as long as you've got a sharp end. You can use a needle and all you do is follow pattern all the dots on the pattern and you're going to make a hole in each one keep the needle or whatever you're using upright don't do it at an angle because otherwise the bottom sheet will come out differently and you, and you really don't want that okay now you can see what you've missed by turning over can you see i've got a little gap there where there's no holes so you can keep turning over and seeing what you've done it's quite therapeutic this is just sitting making holes in a bit of paper so you're just going to follow that round keep turning it over to check what you've done and what you haven't done you can see i'm using the safety pin here you haven't got to have any special tools just keep going, turn over, check what you've done, take your time, it's not a race, it's not a marathon, think I've got it all now. There we go. 
and it's this that will end up as your right side not the side that you've pricked okay so when you've done all the holes keep checking and just move the the paper clips so that you can get either side all right just slide them along and then you can get to all the all the dots take the paper clips off and then gently tear apart the layers like that okay that pattern you could use again so you can do some more so once you've got them torn apart from each other you can then cut round the edge so if you carefully cut just outside where you have made the holes so use that as a guide and just evenly just cut roughly around the edge can you see what i'm doing let me stand up and then you might be able to see a little bit better okay so i'm cutting all around the edge yep and you can see the, the dots there use them as a guide and once you've gone all around the edge you'll end up with that now the rough is the right side so you're going to put some glue or i'm using double-sided tape because it's quick but you can use stick glue just the same you can put a little bit of glue in the middle and then mount that onto a piece of paper all right and then i'm mounting that again i'm doing a double a double mount but you can just do it once it's fine whatever you want to do so i'm going to stick that onto there and last This was my blue Peter one because I put all the tape on before I started. And then take your card, your base card, and stick that into the centre. Right. Turn your work over when you're um, sticking anything. Because if there happens to be anything on your hands, you won't mess your card up. You'll keep that pristine on that side. It's a little tip for you, isn't it? And then into the centre, you'll see on the worksheet that there's what they call Victorian scraps. But they used to use all sorts of things, even shells they used to use, but dried flowers, anything like that. But I'm going to put something that's very apt. It could be a county badge. It could be anything that you want. Make sure you've got your card opening right. Don't do it upside down because I've done it many a time. Accidents happen, but... I'm just going to stick the badge in the centre there. What's nicer than that for a thinking day card? I hope you have a go at paper pricking. Happy thinking day, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Right, we're off to our chalet now in Switzerland and the worksheet shows some Edelweiss and we're going to make a little Edelweiss clip. You've got a picture there of the chalet and the official logo of our chalet has actually got Edelweiss on it so that's very apt. You've got two templates here which you'll need to cut out and cut those out in either felt or hobby foam whatever you've got to hand. Okay so just cut those out and you've got two pieces like that put them on top of one another and what we're going to do is take some thread you can put a great big knot on it if you want because it's not going to be seen and all i'm doing is just stitching those together little stitch there all right and then i'm going to do i've put on the worksheet bullion knots which you might not know. 
So what you do, bring your thread up to the front. The way you do a French knot is a couple of winds round the needle and then go back down almost in the same hole that you came up. Go straight down through both pieces of felt, pull it through and you'll end up with a little knot on the right side like that. Okay, now I'm doing this in green thread so as it shows up, but you can do it in whatever colour you want for your Edelweiss. Now I'm going to do another couple of French knots. And then I'm going to do a bullion knot in the centre. So just do another, another French knot. You're more or less going down in the hole that you came up in. I hope you can see me. You should be able to zoom in on the on the video to see it closer up. Pull that thread through. I got caught somewhere. I'm pulling the wrong end, that's why. There we go. Right. Now for a bullion knot, it's similar, but you turn the thread round your needle more times. So, instead of going a couple of times, I'm going one, two, three, four, five. You can do it longer if you want to. And... You don't go back into the same hole, you go a little bit longer. So you're making a long stitch. And again, pull that through, but this time you've made a long knot instead of a single knot. Can you see? Up. Several times round the needle. Pull it tight. I'm trying to not get my hand in the way so that you can see it. And down you go. And just build up the centre of your flower. There's the deal. I've done that on a, on a little sample. You can see there's a French knot, which is the small one, and there's the bullion knot, which is a lot bigger. Okay, once you've done as many knots as you want to, I'm, I'm not going to do any more now. And you can do a big knot on the back if you want, because as I say, it's not going to be seen. If I was doing it properly, I'd, I'd finish it off properly, but it's not going to be seen. Cut that off. And then you can mount that onto a brooch back, if you've got a brooch back. If you want to cover the mechanics, cut yourself a little bit of felt, a rain piece of felt and stick that on the back. Just a circle of felt just to cover up the back of the embroidery. So we're going to put that on there like that. That will cover it up and then put your brooch back on. Or you could stick it onto a clip of some kind. Bit of double sided tape, works wonders. And there you go, you've got a clip that you can use as a note clip okay and it will remind you of the chalet so hopefully you'll make a little edelweiss clip to transport you away from england away from all this virus to the chalet clean air high up high on the mountain okay our last craft is based on the World Thinking Day theme, which for this year is peace. There's the, the badge. Hope you'll all get one. And the workshop sheet here is for rainbows. Rainbows are a symbol of, 
of peace so that's why i've chosen that now i can't take the credit for this my friend chris spencer has done the um the template for this and the pattern so i'm just doing chris's chris's work so thank you very much to chris spencer for this there's a step-by-step -step guide on there that I've written out for you and a few little um, drawings to show you what you're going to do. So we're going to have a go together. You can do it step-by-step -step at your own leisure. Now I've heard every excuse in the book for why you can't do craft. And we're going to cross the T off and make it can instead of can't. Okay? Everything you've got, you've got at home. You should have a sheet. The second sheet is that one which has got the template on and the pattern and that's what we're going to be using so first of all cut out your template and put that onto the center of your piece of a5 card draw around it And then carefully cut that out. Now, if you haven't got a knife, then use a pair of scissors. That's fine. Make sure you are on a self-healing mat on your table. Many a dining room table has been cut with a craft knife. So, we cut the template out and put that on one side. You can use that again when you want to make more. Top back on the knife and put that away. So let's go to the pattern. Now the pattern has got all little lines on it. So we're gonna lay that down and put our piece of card that you've just cut the, the template out of. You're gonna lay that on top. Now this is going to be the wrong side. That is gonna be the right side underneath. OK, so whatever happens on this side is not going to show. Now, I said that on purpose because it does look really messy when you're doing it. But don't worry, you're probably doing it right. Now, you need some strips of paper now, all the colours of the rainbow. And you'll need about that much, which is a, a quarter of an A4 piece of paper. So you'll need about that much in each of the seven colours. All right. And you're going to cut that into strips. Now, if your cutting's off, here's another excuse. I can't cut straight. All you're going to do is cut it roughly into four. If you cut it a bit wobbly, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to cut this wobbly on purpose to show you that it doesn't matter. We go all over the place, look. OK, even if you want to tear it and you can't tear it quite, quite properly. There you go. Rough edges. You can still use that and I'll show you how. Once you've got your strips, you need to fold them roughly in half. Like that. Now, these are those strips that I've just cut that are all higgledy piggledy. I've done it on purpose to show you that you can use them. So I'm going to turn those over now and make those into strips. I've got some red there. I'm going to cut that one last time. And I'm going to turn that over so that we've got the, that done. So just gently take your strips and you end up with all your strips like this okay and you've got a set of strips for each color of the rainbow all right so you've stuck your template onto the pattern and we're going to start with red you've got lines on the pattern you need to lay each strip over the line so for red it will be r one to nine so r1 we're going to lay the folded edge against the r1 line and we're going to make sure you cut off over the aperture 
so that it's it's not inside so we're going to cut there and we're going to stick it so you can see there that r1 is against the line across the aperture and it's over the aperture okay then we do r2 which is down here R2. Now, if you haven't got sellotape on a reel like me, again, no excuse. I used to do this and I used to have lots of bits of sellotape all along the edge of my table. So there's no excuse. You can still have a go. So we're going to secure that down. Like that. And then we're going to go to R4, which is there. Bit of sellotape on. Cut the end off. And a bit of sellotape on that end. Then we're going to do R5. Is that long enough? Yeah. Now that's one of my scraps that I cut off from the others but you can see you can use the scraps up so it hasn't got to be a whole piece as long as it goes over so there's our five so there's the first five like that all right then we build up our six which is here put the folded edge of your strip along the line then R7, we're going to do there, then R8, and finally R9. Okay, so there's the red complete. Now the second one is obviously orange. So you'll take your strips, the folded edge will go along the line. So here we've got O1. Chop it off so that it's over the aperture to the end. Okay, and you're going to keep doing that right the way through all the colours and you will end up with something that looks very very messy you'll end up with that it looks very very messy but don't worry you've done it right so i'm just going to put the violet on there i've worked up to the violet here so V1, goes on there, V2, goes down here, V3 goes on here. Don't worry if it looks messy. You've done it right. Now the last one, V4, is a rectangle. And you're going to put that completely over the top. So that's just going to be stuck on like that. All the way around. Okay. And that's what you finish up with. And here's the magic. You're gently going to peel that off now. Take your sticky tape off. And hey presto, you have a rainbow. It's magic. I love that bit. Okay.
Okay, so now we're going to mount that onto a dark piece of card. I'm going to use double-sided tape for this bit. But you can use 3D spacers, you can use glue, whatever you want to use, you use. But I'm just putting four bits of double-sided tape around the edge, a little bit in the middle. I'm going to tear that off. I can hear people all around Midlands and beyond saying, oh, how does she tear that off so quickly? It's easy lift double-sided tape. So I'm going to put that onto a mount like that. Okay, just stuck it onto a piece of black in this case. And then I'm going to put it onto my base card. And I am going to use 3D spaces for that. So I'm just going to dot a few. Just round the card. A few in the middle. Like that. Take the backs off those 3D spaces. I can hear you saying, how's she doing that so quick? It's experience and being used to it. Up until last year, when we couldn't travel, I was actually doing demonstrations and, and workshops on cruises. <laughs> so... We can't do that now, but we can still craft. There's no reason why we can't craft. There we are. Stick that on and there's your finished rainbow. And you can decorate it how you want. This is the one that Chris did. She's just put some happy birthdays on and what have you, whatever you want. And there's other designs that you can do. Perhaps you can think of some for yourself that you can do. So there we go. We've got rainbows as your symbol of peace for the World Thinking Day theme. There's my badge again. I hope you all have a wonderful thinking day. Best wishes to you all. Keep safe. Keep happy. Keep in touch and beyond all else, keep guiding and keep crafting.